Hi everyone, welcome back to Mark One Design EMC channel. Um, I have done a episode trying to introduce the basics of spread spectrum that uh, is a technique often used for switch mode power supply. Um, there are lots of myths about uh, spread spectrum. Some people call it cheating, some people say it's not cheating, it's actually useful. So I made this video a long time ago, but I, I never got the time of uploading it. And in September, um, this year, I went to Bruges for the EMC Europe event, and I had the pleasure of attending a professor from Austria, uh, T.U. Graus, I think it's called, and the, the professor's name I remember clearly called Professor Bernard Deutschmann, and he did an excellent presentation on spread, spread spectrum, and really, um, you know, it's eye-opening, and uh, I wish I could uh, share more. And um, But I thought, you know, this video is really just for uh, engineers who haven't actually come across this subject. So I still upload this, but as I mentioned, if you really want to dive deep into this subject, then Professor Bernard Deutschmann's research group is the uh, sort of the group that really specializes in these techniques. Uh, so enjoy. So let us first have a look at the setup we have to generate a quasi spread spectrum algorithm, okay? So using this functional generator, okay? And the configuration we have is we ask channel two to follow channel one. Basically, uh, whatever we output on channel one, uh, uh, channel two just follows. And we are using a oscilloscope to measure the time domain signals coming out of the signal generator and uh, the frequency domain analysis we're using a tech box uh, receiver okay so on the functional generator we set up a square wave with 100 millivolts peak to peak frequency 2 megahertz and we put the duty ratio as 70 percent duty ratio okay so if i output um, channel 1 and also enable channel 2 right and we can see on the uh, oscilloscope we have a fixed frequency okay fixed frequency um, 2 megahertz as is showing here and um, the peak to peak voltage measured is about 100 millivolts okay rise time as 3.2 nanoseconds this is the waveform we have okay so this waveform represents a fixed switching uh, frequency uh, waveform okay now back to this how do we generate a spread spectrum uh, switching waveform then so what we can do is go to uh, modulation scheme okay so we can choose uh, different types of modulation in this case because we're trying to mimic uh, spread spectrum so the best modulation scheme we use we should use is frequency modulation okay so we select frequency modulation okay done and then you can set up now two par parameters which are very important to enable this uh, spread spectrum uh, switching scheme one is deviation and the other is modulation frequency so on deviation we currently set as 400 kilohertz now what it means is 400 kilohertz basically 0.4 megahertz right so that means when I enabled, I have a frequency uh, span, let's say 1.8 to 2.2. So that's about 400 kilohertz between, between the start and stop frequency, let's say. And that represents 400 kilohertz. The other frequency is um, this frequency. And this is really the modulation frequency, what we call. Right now, I set it as 7 kilohertz. So basically means once this is enabled, okay, so my switching frequency will be uh, changing between 1.8 megahertz and 2.2 megahertz at a rate of 7 kilohertz. And in terms of the shape, I can, I can do different shape, and right now I select at a triangular shape. That means uh, my frequency will increase from 1.8 megahertz all the way to 2. 0.4 megahertz and then from 2.4 megahertz then going down back to 1.8 megahertz again and this change is uh, 7 kilohertz now if i enable this uh, modulation scheme as you can see here that represents my triangular uh, shape frequency modulation okay now this button 
indicates the modulation scheme is enabled. So now moving to the time domain uh, analysis, you can see now my frequency as measured, showing here, jumps between about 1.8 to 2.2 megahertz, as I said, and this is uh, at 7 kilohertz rate, okay? Of course, I can change the rate to, to be uh, quicker, but I'm happy with this setup. And as you can see here, the waveform actually is not fixed anymore, right? So you can see the rising and falling edge actually uh, changing. So for example, you can see here, right? So that represents the switching frequency uh, change. So that is our sort of um, mock spread spectrum scheme. Now let's move to the frequency domain and have a look at its impact. Okay, so let's have a look at the frequency domain analysis. In this case, we set up a CISPR 25 class 1 voltage sweep, okay, because in this mode, the conducting emission plot will plot frequency performance between 150 kHz and 108 megahertz. Okay, and in this case, we only enabled uh, the peak limit because we just wanted to compare the difference between the two switching schemes. As you can see here, first we just use the fixed frequency switching scheme, which is 2 megahertz, 70% duty ratio. Okay, so we're gonna uh, do a sweep. Okay, so you can see here we have uh, our results plotted in this case, okay? You can see 2 megahertz, 4 megahertz, 6 megahertz, 8 megahertz, and so on. Okay, so that's our fixed frequency results. Now, if I enable the spread spectrum switching scheme and do exactly the same sweep. Now, let's have a look, okay? So you can see this is the spread spectrum analysis showing in this color. Now let's load the previous results. Okay, so previous results we can load. Uh, save this as one, back. Okay, so yeah, you can see clearly from this results, right? With fixed frequency, this is the peak uh, scan results, whereas with the uh, spread spectrum, clearly you can see a big improvement, isn't it? So in terms of the peak value, the results can be as you know can be more than um, shows more than 10 dB reduction right in the in the frequency range. This is especially true in the lower frequency range. Whereas it comes to higher frequency, this uh, advantage uh, becomes uh, less effective. Let's say, but still, you you gain about 3 dB uh, improvement. But of course, the uh, spread spectrum, as the name suggests, really spreads energy. So rather than having a, 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 a narrow um, bin, let's say, uh, compared with the fixed frequency, the spread spectrum switching scheme basically spreads the energy uh, in this window. The sp spread spectrum scheme is a good option, let's say. But um, we wanted to make the point, right? All this scheme looks pretty good, right? If you enable this scheme, you pass the conducting emission, your boss give you a big uh, pat on the shoulder. However, the point we wanted to make is that this only works because of the way we test the EMI, okay? When I say that is, in this sweep, we perform the conducting emission based on CISPR 25, meaning from 150 kilohertz all the way to 30 megahertz we are using a fixed resolution bandwidth, okay? And this fixed resolution bandwidth is, according to the standards, defined as 9 kilohertz. And then from 30 megahertz upwards, we are changing to another resolution bandwidth, which is 120 kilohertz. Now, if you are using a different resolution bandwidth, i.e. a bigger resolution bandwidth window, then this advantage all of a sudden disappeared, okay? And this can be showing in, let's just have a quick look. Right? So now have, let's have a look at the spectral analyzer mode, okay? Starting frequency from one megahertz, stop at 30 megahertz, okay? Now with 10 kilohertz resolution bandwidth, this is the result of a uh, fixed frequency uh, scheme, okay? Now, if I enable spread spectrum, and you can see that's the improvement. As we 
demonstrated in the previous case. Okay, now look, if I started to increase the resolution bandwidth from 10 kilohertz, let's say to 100 kilohertz, okay, so this is 100 kilohertz resolution bandwidth, the signal is exactly the same. Now, this is the result, okay, now if you pay attention to this. Uh, peak and this peak, right? So this one about 90, 192, this one about 85. Now if I disable the spread spectrum, you see the level in terms of the peak value, they are more or less the same. You can't really tell the difference. Now if I exaggerate a bit and I make it 1 megahertz resolution bandwidth, okay? So this is a 1 megahertz resolution bandwidth um, results with fixed switching frequency. Now, if I now enable the spread spectrum, that only demonstrates the point that most spread spectrum scheme in the market are designed to meet certain EMC standards. When it comes to real life applications, so for example, if you've got a TV channel, which often occupies a bandwidth that is larger than a few megahertz, that means you will not escape the electromagnetic interference by using the spread spectrum. Okay, so hope, hope you enjoy this episode. See you later.